The Last Poem, First Edition, Revision B, written by Joseph Leo Hickey III, published by Melodium House, cover artwork by Michael Thompson, narrated by Dane Michael Brady. This book is copyrighted by Joseph Leo Hickey III, and the print version was originally published in 2018. The rustling of the wind on the trees, the warmth of the sun against my cheeks, the leaves of autumn falling. In all of these, I remember serenity. I am writing all of these words on my first day at university. The world is quieter than I would like it to be. Sitting in the classroom, reading the PDF she sent me less than a year ago, I will write a book of my own and share it with the world. Last summer, I had trouble sleeping. Last summer, I had trouble believing that I would ever be the person I was before again. However, all things change. It's just a matter of time. For the rest of this year, I will spend it drinking and seeing her face in the faces of strangers. But then her face disappears. All we are is dust in the wind. All we are is the anthem of nations. All we are is the summers we have forgotten. Someone came up to me and said, Pain, you will feel better. It just takes a little time. I feel an energy inside of me pushing me never to stay in one place again. I never should have believed anything, Serenity said. I was an idealist. I had faith in a god I'd never see. She never had any faith, even in the visions of her I would see. This will be the longest poem I will ever write. This will be the last poem I will ever write. An end to my short career as a poet. I promise you, I will never write one again. All my other words will be plain and simple, pure, and easy to understand. But these words you must decipher to find out what I mean, to uncover the torture inside me, to figure out why we together are still in need. When I'm in a room with a hundred students, I feel crowded and have to leave. When I'm in a room all by myself, I feel compelled to leave. Where will I go when there is nowhere else to go? Uninspired words come from everyone I see. The rest of my life will be so dull. This will be the only thing I do that is interesting. I'm still sitting in this classroom, crafting a PDF. The words I say now are perfect. No one will ever explain it better later. There are a thousand images in my mind. In the countryside far from here, it is beautiful. In the heavens, the stars go on forever. There are worlds we will never find. Here on Earth, we express what we feel about all the things we can never reach. Love is one of these things which we may never attain. To live your life with no one there for you. To watch every person walk by. I can stand on my own two feet, but I am not better off than you. At the party, we drink till we can't drink anymore. 
to put a temporary end to our misery, drowning out the sorrow through wine. I feel so sorrowful whenever I come back to my hometown. I feel so regretful when I think of everything I could have done. There is something, not an emotion, but close to it. Not a virtue, but close to it. Not a person, but close to it that I have been longing for, but am convinced I will never find. Long ago, I was lying alone in a tent, dreaming about now forgotten memories. Long ago, I was young. Long ago, I thought I would never be taken from my home. Long ago, I thought my home would never be burned to the ground. I see the world change. You filled me with joy. I see the world writhe in its misery. I am being drowned in the water of uncertainty. A typewriter that will never be used to write beautiful words ever again. I see the world change. I feel powerless to intervene. We have an opportunity to be who we never thought we could become. If no one will be listening in the world, we will not see any changes. Drugs inside your veins make it impossible to feel truth. I walk by you, and I thought I saw in one of your faces the face of serenity. Despair has overcome me. I no longer believe in the things I see. To become so close to nothingness is the way I need to live. Sleep and dream about kingdoms at war and all the lies I've told in my life. I still see her, sitting alone, in the middle of the school, in front of her locker. Poetry, she said, is a sacrament. You certainly know when you have it, but no one can define it. On the first day of class, when I met Serenity, she didn't say a word, but emailed her PDF poetry book to the entire school the next day. The monster who ended her life is gone. We will never have today again. After she left this world, I left her behind. I left all my past memories behind. Nothing I see now is beautiful. Serenity comes to me in my dreams. Thank you for holding on to me. When all I want is to forget her, she reminds me of the torture in my soul. She reminds me that I will never admire a poem again because you know where poetry is, and I will never have it again. Meeting friends at a coffee shop, a woman approaching asking about a Bible study. I will worship God at the altar of broken beer bottles, and by abandoning the last sacrament I will ever intake, form, matter, and intention are all gone now. 
This is the last poem I will ever write. I say it once, never say it ever again. Experience so many beautiful things. Once you've experienced death, nothing will again be beautiful. We are all replaceable. We are too destructible. Snow falling in November, my face freezing. The feeling I get when I can barely move my lips because of how they are freezing. The moment I saw Serenity standing alone in the cold snow, she was freezing and there was no one there to help her. When the words fail to come, heart attack, suddenly approaching, overcoming, overwhelming, telling us who we are. But after the heart attack, we will not know anything ever again. Say goodbye after all we've tried without you here. Nothing is clear, always falling into an ocean where finding you is like finding the shore. Sitting through another boring lecture and then the class ends, and then I walk the streets of the campus, and then I walk the streets of the city, contemplating the poverty there. And then I am dreaming on the floor of the sidewalk. And then I don't get up for several years, and I watch the stars go. And then it all goes black. There are feelings inside of me that you will never know. On the altar of my sorrow, I place my soul. Maybe we're disenchanted and can't tell what's real. On the altar of my anguish, I place my heart. The things I've lost remind me of the torture that annihilates the stars. I feel for her now. I'm reaching for her now. Underneath my skin, my beating heart is crying out. Destroy me and recreate me. Wash me away and take me far from here. If she was still alive then there would be no more elevation, higher than the mountains. Together we would be spiritually united, pure and holy, ecstatic. Songs never could describe any of the feelings we would share. I would feel underneath her skin, her life force, should be surging throughout her. I know I would always love her. She is the motion that moves the entire world when it is frozen. She is the cure for the slow passing seasons when we would stay inside, daydreaming. But instead, we will find what we dream about. She is the freedom in the moments when the chains of time attack us. Destroy the world and live in a new one. We will live together and endure the unending cold of the old world when the sun is gone. We will live together and endure the unending heat of the new world. I know my imperfection is causing me to lose control. I feel so many things at once. 
The only way of resurrection is to die and rise again. There is no way to perfection except to know the flaws and love them too, to fall in love with what's inside. She was where truth, beauty, and the depth of melodies collide. And I struggle to describe the melodies that I hear colliding and meshing, creating new music. We are that music. We could be each note slowly inhabiting the world. But we quickly leave and are never seen here again. We also have strong and powerful emotions welling up inside us for the short time we are here that beg to be expressed forever and after. But these can all be taken away when the gun, the knife is pressed up against us, when we are freezing, when we are burning, when we are thrown from a great height. I struggle to find the answers, and I will never believe it again when I am told, if you just believe, you will live forever. I saw the love in Serenity's eyes. I saw truth, eternal life, in a single moment with her. The rest of eternity is spent dreaming, with no transitional object. I'll travel through the rest of my life. The wind moves slowly across my back as I put the notebook in my backpack and then stand in the snow and walk to the next class. Another boring lecture. Another day where the sun is covered by the clouds. I ignore the lecture and pick up the notebook and begin to write. The cycle of creation. The rain falling on my doorstep. The truth we will never find about what you were thinking now that you have passed away. I feel so at peace only when I am writing. I feel awake when I am dreaming. And then the years pass while I am awake. The cycle of the passing years. In your room, playing Halo 2. In the car, driving through the snow. Now I am walking through the snow. Leaving footprints wherever I go. When I am feeling the strongest feelings I will ever feel. And there are no words in my mind to express them. I know the rest of my life will be wasted time. Melody inside my mind moving. A song that needs to be put to words. What counts is the music. No one will understand it unless I describe it to them. I look up and the clouds have revealed the sun. Cold nostalgia enveloping me from every side. There are words to describe the things we don't understand. There are no words to describe some things we will never understand. I walk again through the hallways and... I forgot where I was for a few moments. When the day is over, I will fall asleep and have more dreams about realms I will never visit, and that we all have magical powers, and that words will always change the world. I'll have more drinks than I should, and a party. I will fall asleep again, and dream again, and the dreams are always the same. I hold your hands through the prison window 
and you grasp onto it. I follow you out of the prison, and you lead me to fields of green where I will never have to worry about what other people think of me, or schoolwork, or being alone again. You tell me, today is the first day of eternity. It is longer than you think. It goes on forever and ever, and there is nothing after or before. And we touched hands and saw different galaxies spinning out of place. We saw volcanoes exploding, destroying entire cities. We saw the hopes of worlds ending and the birth of worlds beginning. We saw the days pass where I sat alone dreaming about serenity. And she said that there would be no more to spare. We walked through the streets of Beijing and Tokyo, Paris and New York, all in the same day. She showed me the slums in far-off lands where some people live with nothing. She told me that no one ever has nothing. She told me that peace is found in letting go of the things that you hold dear and holding on to love. We saw the days pass and become nights a million times over. We saw the world change and the balance of power change. We saw the presidents of nations long overthrown. My heart was stripped of the desire to ever go home again. It is better to always be a wayfarer, running from city to city, from nation to nation, from world to world, from galaxy to galaxy, from universe to universe, all in a day and a thousand millennia. We were young and we were brave when we were both alive. Now we are totally fearless and will never age again. She showed me the harmony between all things, how we all belong together, and said, you should have learned all of these things while you were alive. The days passed, but they passed like seconds. The war would continue and end with nations surrendering their freedoms. And I watched as one by one they laid down their arms and everyone lived the rest of their lives under the yoke of a new order, and people started to live each day without anything to look forward to, and it was grueling. But the night drew back, and the curtain of the dawn drew back, and the sun shined upon the world, and everyone created something beautiful together, and grew to love what they had created and knew that they had to protect it with their souls and hearts and bodies. And then we left the earth and saw the stars dancing and the galaxies spinning and beckoning us to come closer to them. We felt joy when we realized how unending time was, and then we met all of the people who had passed away like us. We saw the faces of presidents and judges, we saw the faces of celebrities and kings, but never talked to any of them. We quickly drifted past them all toward the dawn and creation of a new world, where new people will walk and live their lives. We saw the world destroyed. We saw what we used to love purged in flames. All books we loved were burned, all homes we lived in were flattened, all the people we loved were murdered, all life on earth was ended. But the spirits survived for a while and hovered over the oceans, wondering why the world suddenly came to an end. Half of them didn't believe it had happened to them. Some talked to others and questioned each other, but they didn't recognize each other and didn't believe that they were talking to their own spouse when they saw them in the void of time floating over the oceans. We saw the school where they bullied us, Serenity, and we didn't see a soul there. They had all moved on from those hallways, but the demons still thrived there, living in celebration because of the agony they caused. We saw our old homes flattened and destroyed. And then the fire started to spread, and we saw our old homes burning in fire. 
and I took Serenity's hand as it burned, and we watched the world face its judgment. In the fire, I saw God telling us that we now regret our past mistakes and that we must live with these mistakes forever and after. I saw the wheels on the car stop as the people had fled from their cars in traffic. I saw the animals run through the deserts and the forests and the plains. I saw pet dogs that were left alone in their homes. They would never see their owners ever again. I had always wanted to be far away from where I am comfortable. I am stronger than anyone ever believed. And I started to feel for everyone who ever lived. And Serenity said, Pain, you are the one I dream about when I become one with all things and nothing. And I said, Now I understand everything and possess all knowledge. When the world is destroyed, we know it will come back to us. We see the skyscrapers in New York City falling down and destroying the buildings around, sending clutter all up and down these streets. Serenity took my hand and showed me another universe, where people live and wait for a savior. They wait for someone to come and break their chains. And Serenity whispered something in the ear of a sleeping man, and the man woke up and started a rebellion that reshaped, reforged, and transformed his world into something beautiful and free. And then there was joy, and then there was peace. It only takes a thought to change and recreate the world. We stood on top of a mountain in that world and watched people grow up and learn. We watched their first steps in a world that was new to them. Serenity took me quickly to another world and met someone who was sad to be alone. And Serenity took a tangible form and walked beside him until the day he died. And then she was back with me. Eighty years I waited for her to come back to me. But she came back to me. It wasn't that hard to change a life, to save someone from the doldrums of every dark and dreary day, to make someone feel like they are loved. And we went through space forever, traveling to countless worlds. Millennia didn't seem so long anymore. We both knew that we could wait it out. I forgot the times I stayed awake at night and would finally fall asleep but wake up in tears. I forgot the times I was punched in the stomach and had all my things stolen from me at school. And I will never change my mind, because I already know the truth. And we went to new worlds, and saw the songs that were sung in them about hope and reconciliation and joy. I stopped feeling emotions, but if I felt anything, it would be joy. Some worlds lost their ability to sing and then waited for the rest of eternity. I take an old cassette recorder and go outside and start walking through the mud, the snow still on the ground from yesterday. The sun lights a path through the darkness. I remember when I said those words, but now I am walking through space and time. I inhabit the meadows and become one with the spirits of the trees. The ripples in the water by the lake, the vast distance that the sky is above the lake, the clouds and how we never knew what they really were. The man in the middle of the lake who rides on a motorboat. Fireworks that explode in the sky in celebration of new worlds and the end of an old world. At the rock concert, we thought we could express ourselves through music, but never could come up with a single sentence to describe you specifically. I see myself in past lives. I'm walking back towards the lake, seeing all these things, but not knowing anything about them. Each day it is harder to write, more difficult to describe the things. I have no idea what they are. Simple moments like beauty 
love and peace and the worst thing that could have happened to us during our lives happened. To sit by the water, to listen to the sound of each passing moment. And we went through the world for 10,000 years and thought about the things that used to bring us torture. We walked through the woods and heard the woods and heard the rustling of the trees and the wind. We walked hand in hand like we used to, but we would never go home again. 10,000 more years passed and we saw the world become bored of the same cycle of death and rebirth. We grew to hate the growing darkness that surrounded the world and was about to swallow it whole. We wondered why we spent our days longing and needing instead of belonging and falling in love. We forgot about the music in our lives that motivated us to do everything we had done throughout our life. We forgot about the torture we thought would never end each agonizing moment. About 10,000 years later, we realized that the world we came from is our world and we can always make it anything we want it to be. She took me to where we would sit for hours in our car, looking at the night, gazing into the depth of an eternity of darkness. It is so easy to get lost. It is even easier to be found. It is grace when you are here with me. It is grace when you are gone, and I dream of you. A thousand dances in the darkness, a million warm embraces, and a million more kisses from the spiritual force surrounding you. We are gone. We will never be alive again. The world is bright once again, and we will spend eternity following the wars of the old ages of ancient Rome violence and then decay, memories of you and me and all of our friends. I saw the future clearly when I looked into the past, music we will never forget, the decision I made to always love you, to never let go of you. The trips we took in our youth, the future we never had. We saw a world in which we spend each day grieving. We saw a world in which we spent each day in each other's arms. We saw worlds where the sky was clear and the sunlight warmed up the entire world. We saw a world where we were satisfied. We saw a world where we were hungry and spent each day scavenging for food. We saw a world before the firestorm. We saw a world after the firestorm, incineration and vast plains where there is nothing. The world after violence is no world at all. We saw ourselves reading 10,000 books for years and absorbing all of the knowledge from them. And then we saw ourselves experiencing every story in every book and becoming those characters and feeling what the authors of those books had imagined those characters would feel together. And the days crawled forward without the sun and they crawled forward without the moon and without the stars because all of the stars were gone. The sun had lost its light long ago, uncountable eternities ago. Were we even here? Did you even hold my hand? Who will remember us? Who will think of us for one moment ever again? I will not mourn anything but this. The world is no longer the world. I saw us together dancing in a club. We were both too young to drink. I saw the light underneath the windows foreshadowing, the light that would always be finding me for an eternity no matter which road I take. 
I saw the world in the light of the new day. I have books to write that you will never read. I have movies to make that you will never watch. I have music to write that you will hear, and the voices of strangers walking up and down your street you will hear this music, and the voices of lovers of promises fulfilled and promises broken. You will hear this music in the sunrise, the dawn of each new dreary and magnificent day. You will hear this music when someone passes you on the street that you will never see again. And you will feel regret when you never see your best friend ever again. Serenity in death became more than who she was in life. When the world goes on without her, when the world becomes darker every passing second when I wished I was far away, my body has shut down from drinking too much. Her body was destroyed by bullets. She told me to listen carefully for the voice of God. When you're not thinking of anything, when you cannot feel anything, when you cannot see anything, when you cannot hear anything else, when you can only taste a longing for something more. The look on her face before she stepped into that classroom in which she lost her life. We stayed there for a moment and never returned there again. We remembered the moment when we stared at the blue expanse of the sky and never remembered those moments again. We forgot so many things. We forgot why the suffering within our own souls was ever there to begin with. And then we wondered what our souls were. A thousand cities. A thousand cries out for help in the middle of a thousand storms, promises made but not fulfilled. I told Serenity about the words that will never be spoken again. She corrected me, saying, No words will ever be spoken again. And then we saw the end of the world. Some people didn't die from the disease right away, but others did. Some took several years. But when the last person died, I gave him a copy of this last poem, and he took it, but erased it, and wrote over it with his own words. During my life, I wanted to go and see all of the sights of the world, follow the stars wherever they would take me, to the pyramids of Egypt, the Great Wall of China. But now I only see one thing. The faces of all those who are suffering. I only can hear cries out for help, and I can do nothing for them. We went back to the time before the world ended, and thought we had seen everything there is to see. But we soon realized that 10,000 years can be experienced in 7 billion different ways. We followed the lives of every human person, but when it was over, when the uncountable hours had passed, we met up again and still knew there was more to feel and more to experience, more to become, and more ways to take in each breath. We knew that heartbreak can only be felt so many times before it leaves a mark on the created order. After we had seen life through the eyes of every human person, Serenity took me by the hand and whisked me far away once more. We saw the wars we had experienced before and felt what God felt when he witnessed them. We had never felt compassion until we felt the unbearable pain. You can love someone so much. You can be so close to someone. You can have them deep in your arms and feel them bury themselves into your chest and then they can be gone. And you will never feel them again. And then there will be tears. And those tears will never be seen or heard by anyone. But they will be witnessed by God. They will be always invisible to every other person. 
And then serenity reminded me of all of the love I had experienced, of all the joy there is to feel in every human person. How the truth of this joy flooded every ocean and empty space in the world. Just before the end, when people realized, why are we fighting? Don't we all end up in the same place? And then she showed me music and beautiful melodies that portray this same joy. No one could escape from it at the end of the world, before the last living person died. When he died, he took in a thousand deep breaths, and then his ultimate breath. Then the nights were silent, and all that was left were the animals. They roamed free in the night, wondering what had happened and where all the people had gone. The last of us had disappeared, and then there was silence during the night, while the animals slept patiently, waiting for a change in the world, but the world would never change again. There was only silence before. The heat became so great that all of the animals died, and the ruins of the skyscrapers collapsed under their own weight, destroying all of the cities. In these moments, Serenity and I forgot what was so important about being alive. We learned new things about the nature of reality every moment, and we wanted to forget what we had learned. We experienced love songs in the midst of war, love songs in the midst of violence, in trials and tribulations, in moments where we are lost in a country where we will never speak the language, love songs in the midst of death of loved ones, love songs in the midst of crippling isolation, prayers prayed and accepted and answered, love songs in the center of anguish. All of the love songs were defiant and happy. Love songs in the middle of the dark clouds when we are traveling and do not know where we will end up. Love songs that take us away from thinking about the rest of our lives. Love songs about the things we like. As the days passed, love songs were all that were in our minds. Somewhere in our minds, there was something called love, but you could never define it. Memories of the world we never lived in. Memories of the world we almost lived in. Memories of the way the world could have been without violence. And I held Serenity's hand and walked through the streets of every city we had ever walked alone in. Her hand was more solid now than it had ever been. Her hand was more physical now than it will ever be. When we were young and alive, we felt like nothing could ever stop us. We flew through the forest and saw the nature and cycle of all created things. Birth, death, and then rebirth, and after rebirth, there is fulfillment. The dreams we had for a thousand nights. The days that would pass until we become eventually more than who we are. Serenity showed me herself, sitting in front of her locker, an unthinkable eternity ago, when we used to go to school together. I saw the people in the halls who used to bully her, and she scribbled out words on a notepad and sent the book she wrote on the notepad to the entire school the next day. And on the last day of high school, she was murdered. The look in her eyes, the gaze into eternity, the reflection from her eyes. I saw my own face. She waited there alone for the bell to ring. She waited there alone for ten thousand years, alone with her notepad, writing, crafting beautiful words that all creation would read. And in the moments where silence overcame me, I would think about her words. In the moments when there was too much noise, I would think about her words. 
and then I could sort through the clutter of sound. In the moments when the sun shined so brightly, I was blinded. I would remember looking into her eyes and would be able to see clearly. In the moments of darkness, I would remember her words and would find a light in my own hands that would lead me out of the darkness. I remember the day we met, the first time we kissed, the day she died, the unbelief of when I was told it had happened. I remember life and ineffable joy life and all its torture, life and all its laughter, life and all its language, life and all its fullness. But I cannot promise I will remember these things forever. The clouds have cleared, and I finally see the sun, even in the midst of so much darkness. The light illuminates the room after I have pulled back the blinds, before I hold and kiss my wife, before I go downstairs to greet my children, before I take the keys and drive to work and repeat the cycle, the things that I never got a chance to experience at any point during my life. The things that were so close to us are now so far away. They are totally unreachable. You can be so skilled at anything, but if you do not have the strength to do it, then none of it will matter. You could be the most skilled writer in the world, but if you have none of the strength to put pen to paper, then the world will never hear you. When the world never hears you, you will never know what would have happened. You will never be understood clearly. You will never know the truth about the nature of human consciousness. Listening to music about how wonderful it is to be alive. While I am no longer alive, I will be at the concert and floating through the room as the songs continue to play. Serenity will be outside the room, somewhere, waiting for me, more than a phantom, less than a myth or a metaphor. Relationships broken, houses burned down, families that will never come together again, we all wish there was another way whenever it happens to us. We watched the astronauts reach the moon and Mars, and we watched the world watch in wonder. We watched the discovery of new worlds and destruction of old worlds. We watched the universe that we thought was eternal die and be consumed in flames. We saw those struggling to feed their families. We saw those they loved ripped away from them. And we saw the greatest tragedies that had ever happened when people forgot about what resides in every human person. We forgot so many words that we should have remembered. We forgot all of the words that we should have remembered and fell into an ocean of uncertainty. We saw nations that we thought would never fall collapse under their own weight were replaced by greater ones. We saw worlds we thought we would never experience become tangible, graspable, and real. We saw technology we thought would never be attainable become inseparable from our day-to-day -day life. We saw tasks that we thought were impossible become completed in a single moment. We saw computers become so advanced that they solved complicated problems and the world was never the same again until the world was gone, until it was all destroyed, until we had nothing but sorrow, until we had experienced everything, including death. And at that point, we would never experience anything ever again, and none of it seemed to matter. All of our accomplishments came to nothing. Rich and poor ended up the same. The things we had accumulated did not matter at all. It did not matter how much wealth we had or how many friends we had. We all ended up exactly the same. I took a drink and forgot about what bothered me. I drowned in sleep and never woke up again. 
I lay close to despair. I could not get the feeling of dead nostalgia out of my mind. I could follow my heart anywhere it would take me. I could become free from lack of passion. I could become the only one in the room strong enough to call things by their true names. I could be the one in the room who realizes what really happened while everyone else is confused. The sunlight drifting through the open field. But we are not there. We are somewhere else that you will never find us. We are carefully crafting our words so that you will understand every sensation we are feeling. I want to hold you so close, and then you will know that I am no longer a phantom. I see my parents weeping over my body. I see your parents weeping over yours on that dreadful day. I feel the fibers of the universe unraveling. I feel so many things at once. I can never bring myself to stop. All I wanted was a life of meaning, a life where I could understand the truth and believe it, too. A life where I understood how wonderful it is to be alive while I was still alive. All of my words were for those who were still alive. None of my words have any meaning since the day I died. I miss the days when we ran through the woods, even though the bombs were going off and the war was just beginning. Even though I never realized that you would soon leave my life forever, I would settle for nothing less than an eternity of peace. There is peace when you understand what is behind your eyes. There is depth and movement and rhythm, and then there is music. There are worlds we have never seen. When we become one with all things and nothing, that is what we are all now. Nothing. I want you to feel what I was feeling when I was alone in my room, reading books and dreaming about what I read in them. There is much to read about and infinitely more to write about. Now that time has come to an end, we realize that we wasted all of ours. Now that days are no longer here, we recognize that we didn't take in enough of the sun. Now that our neighbors no longer live there, we realize that in not lifting our hands to help them, we've wasted our entire lives. When no one is listening, there will be no one understanding. We had all day to run through the streets. We spent our days inside, not thinking about anything else but what it would be like to be far away in a different country, somewhere we would never be seen or heard from again by anyone we know. I wish that magic was real so we could explore and experience more, so that we could find ourselves in worlds we would never experience otherwise. Words etched out into eternity. Words etched into our souls. One day, I was at the university in the library, and I found myself reading all kinds of books, books about every country in the world, and every era of recorded history, and then I fell asleep and dreamed that I could experience what the people in those places were feeling. And I remembered when I was feeling those things, the day after I lost my life. The time we spent in the cinema, staring at the screen filled with anticipation for all of the films we would see. Our joy lights up the night when we are walking home from the film. My arm around you. When we look at the stars and wonder about them, we do not use any words, but we do not need to. I touch you, and we need to. The stars are a sacred reflection of heaven that shines down on us, which is why I see truth in you. The lament we have when we know we will never experience our youth again. The joy we feel when we realize that touch is the same as communion, that communion is the same as love, loss, and then grief, torture, and then agony, love, and then fulfillment, joy, 
and then spiritual peace. Walking out the door and never going through that same door again. Walking one direction and you are walking that way forever. The same smile on your face today will not be on your face ever again. The time and sensations you will never experience again. The sensation we felt in the freezing winter. The sensation we felt during the night when we were left alone. The rain that came down. I took Serenity's hand and we touched the stars. After all the things I learned floating through space and time, I realized that there were a million more things to learn. After 25,000 years of going through different worlds, I always saw myself as the person I always was. I have never changed. I always had the same soul. As if there was nothing I could experience that would change who I am. As if I would never run out of words to express. Although we forget about the lives we lived before, here at the end, there are no more wars left to fight. Nothing else we need. Here at the end, we are isolated, but not alone. We are taken far from home, but we are not homeless. Nights when we lay alone. The cadence of time passing. The memory of time long gone. Our closed minds to whatever is outside of us glory of what we will never feel again, unbelievable dreariness of the next day, when we realize that we are still in school, that we still have things to do that we long to run away from, when we get onto the bus and realize that we will never leave that bus because of the nature of what eternity is and the nature of time passing and the nature of times long gone. You do not believe in heaven. You search and do not find anything. You wish you could find it. Your dream of the purity of what it would be like to never live in this world, to never be possessed by the mania of owning things, to never be taken control of by the mania each day that will pass more slowly than the last one. There is an open door, but you never go through it. There is a cure for the cancer in your blood. There is purity and truth when you realize that we all feel the same things. And I wish I could feel the things you feel, but I will never feel them again. I'm not like you. At least, not anymore. I'm with serenity, going through space and time, and I become one with all things and with nothing. We become washed away in the waves that we forgot about, the same waves from my childhood when I was at the beach. It was drowning in the oceans when I wanted to feel as much as I could in the world. But you broke my heart when I died and you were left behind. You broke my heart when I forgot my promises that I would always be a friend to you. When I forgot my promises, but I will guide you through the storm. Pictures are burned, and every memory is violently torn from our minds when our minds are ripped from our soul. While you were grieving, I was somewhere, not feeling anything. In fact, I wasn't anywhere at all. The last poem I will ever write is the one I will write forever. We feel so powerless. We feel like the leaves on the trees, but they never last more than their appointed time. We feel like there is fire burning inside of us, telling us the only thing to do is to live forever, telling us, compelling us to keep moving on and, and on. In my life, I had regrets. In the days, when the night was quickly coming, days growing shorter, the snow on the ground, the snowflake on Serenity's cheek, life is nothing but a roll of the dice. Death is nothing but the final stroke. Serenity took me to the top of the mountain again. She told me we could dream here forever. She said that within our own skin there was only so much. When people come together, put aside their differences, and unite, that is something truly beautiful. And she said every beautiful thing in the world has its source in this. She said no one can erase the truth from our eyes. She said that there was a good chance that no one will ever remember us. She said this is the way it always has to be. She said our hearts are always compelled by music, always pushed forward by 
melody. She said there is freedom when you chart your own future. There is freedom in a handful of cash. There is freedom in a plane ticket to a place you'll never go. There is freedom in your own two feet to take you where you want to go. There's freedom in a car that will take you anywhere in the country. There is freedom in choosing to love you and to never let go of you. There is freedom in motion and power when you choose to be more than you will ever be, when you choose to set an example for all of history, when you can touch the sky, when you can quit your job and take a risk and do not let them walk over you. There is freedom when you are here when the night is just beginning, when we walk outside, when we absorb every breath and deeply breathe it in, when the sky is so close and so far and we can almost touch it. Let me absorb the contradictions of life like we open up our mouths and breathe. We realize that these are not contradictions at all. When the time passes, when we are studying, when the time passes, when we are living in Kuwait and we know that we will never return to our home, when the bombs go off and blow up the embassy, when the zealot puts down his arms and will never slaughter any innocent person again. But I still dream about being far from where I am, because where I really am is somewhere in the middle of the woods and the open field, and I'm dreaming about the stars that I see. I'm dreaming that I can touch them. When we forget what truth is, when we have lost all of our motivation, when the music of God urges us forward, I could fight forever. When they try to kick me out of school for failing, when they tried to fire me from my job, because they do not understand what my plans are. And then I live homeless for several weeks, and then I struggle and travel the world without caring about anything. The same stars are above me, which I saw sitting in that tent. The same lights guide my way to the city, the street lights, the car lights, and I'm slipping down eternity. You and me breathe the same air. You and me dream the same things. You and me alive together. You and me slipping down eternity. I know you will miss me. I know you have lost your feeling from too much grief. But the day is almost over. The night is setting in. The new day will come. In that morning, forget about me. As if I never existed, then you go on with your own life until it comes to an end. And then we never see each other again. This is the nature of reality. The nature of what it is for all things to pass. But the world goes on while we are gone for several million years. The world is gone, and the world forgets about us, too. When I was young, my future seemed like lifetimes away. When I was young, I could hide from the future, or at least I thought I could. But seconds would pass, and then I would find myself alone again and again. Serenity took me by the hand once again and showed me other beautiful parts of the world, and only beautiful parts of the world. I was always open with my thoughts. I always told you exactly what I was thinking. I can feel the hours pass slowly. I can feel the hours go by before I realize they are gone. I can feel the heart attack within my own chest. I can tell you all of the things I am feeling for as long as I am alive. Serenity walked through the violent world and showed me the beauty in the violence. Serenity walked on water through the storm and showed me the beauty during the storm. Serenity walked through the hospital and told me about all of the diseases in the world and told me about the beauty of the fight against the diseases, about the beauty when the afflictions are gone. In my life, I could not use words to describe what it was like to be alive. In my death, I could not say or feel or tell you anything at all. Between life and death, there is panic. And then there is rebirth and power that falls over us and becomes our own. At the rave party, at the cinema, on the morning of Christmas, when you were here with me, I was happy.
as the bombs fell on us, when you were here with me, I was happy. Salvation will come over us when we sink into the ocean of life and death. We have lost our minds. We have forgotten about the times during our lives when, through the midst of the war, the storm, the epidemic, salvation has come over us. Be here with me during the darkest times of our lives. Be here with me during the happiest times of our lives. Be here with me in those mundane moments when nothing else is happening and we only desire to be with each other in those lazy evenings, those lazy mornings, those lazy afternoons. I remember coming down the elevator to meet you at the kiss and ride and then we kissed and then you drove us to the airport where we spent a week each in several foreign countries like Italy, Norway, Japan. And we sat in the gardens in Japan and had no need to dream because what we had experienced was what we wanted to dream about. While the world was changing, while the wars were just about to begin, while we were about to start our last year of high school, while the summer was fading away like a melody we had forgotten of our favorite song. We will never remember the melody again. And when we forget it, December will set in and then February, and the cold weather remains until the end of the school year, the day you were randomly and indiscreetly murdered in that classroom, you allowed yourself to be tortured to save us. I think about the torture you went through, and it drove me insane, so I drown my sorrow in alcohol. I self-medicate the torture. I remember when you said, pain, death was always inevitable for us, just take in each moment like it is your only one. We had so much to look forward to. We would go to prom together, and you said it would be the first time you had a date at a dance. You said that you were looking forward to many more happy moments with you and me, and I would go to my dorm room and then drink away my sorrow, and one day I drank too much, and then I lost my life, and then I fell through eternity and traveled to this new reality with you, and then I contemplated everything that had ever happened through my entire life and the life of every human person that has ever lived. I love every person who has ever lived. I wish I could be here for them when they are feeling sorrowful, when they are in distress, but I could not reach out to them or change anything that had ever happened. But I knew in my soul that everything was going to be all right. I know that we have so many things to say. I know that on Christmas Day that year I felt peace when I received the gift from you. I will never tell anyone what you gave me, what was meant for only me. I remember reading the PDF you sent to the entire school that night and the darkness I never knew could exude from a single person's soul. The light that fades through my window the morning of the storm, when I am inside writing about what is in my soul, I promised you it wasn't that different, that we have a lot in common, that in writing is where we connect, that there are words I will never speak because they remind me of the words that came from you. The words I would read on the screen, and then the words that faded into obscurity because you will not live anymore. And then I saw the students in the classroom reading your poems during English class and contemplating them, thinking about what they mean. And I was in that class and explained to them all the true meaning of Serenity's poems long after she was gone. The memorial to Serenity outside the school showed that people cared but not enough to stop her death. Really, there is nothing anyone could have done, because I know that you really had to die. Flowers on the tomb, cards, words, poems that cannot fix anything, that can never bring you back. All I wanted was to ask you a single question, to say a single sentence to you, but you would never hear the words I was going to say. You would never hear anything I had to say ever again. You would be with me in the middle of the raging fire when my home burned down from the fire of the bombing run. Luckily my family was gone. Luckily I would dream about being far from where I am and would write every word I would ever write again with complete and 
total confidence. I would never stop writing because you had inspired me. Your family published your poetry after you were dead. Your mother became obsessed with the words you wrote. I knew those words did not perfectly reflect you. You became more than who you would ever be after you were dead, after your life had been extinguished. I visited your mother and comforted her and told them how beautiful you were, how you always strove to make the world better, even in small ways, how in the world there will always be monsters who will not care if they take away your life. They go by different names. And all I can remember are the beautiful things you were telling me, pages and pages of beautiful words that I couldn't recreate if I tried, pages that were lost in the fire when my house burned down and now are lost forever. When the words burned, did they realize what they were? Just strokes of ink on a page, information that has so much intrinsic value to us? It would mean nothing to someone who does not speak our language, who does not understand the viciousness of the world, the brevity of life. A celebration we will never have. The nights when we stand close to the fire, the dreams we have about the summer, and the freedom and motion of the summer nights when we can go and explore without feeling cold in every fiber of our being. The day of school, when the snow covered the ground, I would walk outside and make an imprint in the snow with my boots, and I would walk to the bus stop, and then I would feel the snow start up again and fall on my face. And then I would feel calm and peaceful as I rested my head on that bus and would not say a word. I wish we were never isolated by those who were bullying us. I wish we were never ignored by those who thought they were too good for us. They never understood your poems or what was inside your soul. They never understood the darkness of what was inside that book you sent to the entire school in a single anonymous email. As I was sitting in that bus, I had my iPod plugged into my ears, and I was listening to music. As the clouds stayed in the sky covering the sun, the world was so beautiful, it was so cold, and I was shivering, and dreamed about being with serenity, and dreamed that I would never understand the nature of time passing, and dreamed that I would one day explore the entire world, and dreamed that I would one day know what is happening within the soul of another person. Do we even know what the soul is? Can we even understand it? I have become so desperate to leave my own world, because unless I step out of it, I'll never understand any of it. And I wish the desires in my heart were actually able to be fulfilled. I desire to live forever. I desire to experience joy forever, and to never have to worry again, to never be hungry again, to never forget about my past, and to be able to understand where I am going in the future. I want to be able to give joy to others, so I spent my days inside writing the last poem I will ever write before I die. I spend my days inside lamenting about what has happened to me in the past, and also reading as many books as I can get my hands on, and absorbing the knowledge from them, and dreaming that I am those people that I am reading about, that I have supernatural powers, that I can do something important that everyone who ever lived wishes they could have my life, that I am a rock star singing songs that others relate to, and that they all shout the words back, and that they all understand each decibel of the music, that they understand every lyric to every song, that they become close to the days when they will be alone in their own rooms or apartments and will watch the snow falling down. And then they walk through the snow and see how different the world feels when it is colder and looks different. And they can walk alone through the darkness. And they can walk alone through the light. And they can walk alone in every city, in every time of year. And they will all listen to my music and understand the things I felt. But not enough people will read Serenity's poems and understand the emotions within her soul and I will not understand before I die whether or not the soul is an extension of the human body, or if it is something more, or if it is merely an illusion, something that does not truly exist. There are so many more things to say. When I am sitting in front of the TV screen and Serenity is on the couch next to me, 
and I run my fingers through her black hair because the years have passed and her high school is long gone and we are together. And she still listens to all the bands she listened to before. She's peaceful. She's still alive. She's drowning in the ocean of calm when she's in my arms. She is here with me as I flip through channels. She buries her head into me and she breathes in every moment, slowly. And she recognizes that there is beauty in this moment, too. None of these things really happened. This is what could have happened had the monster not entered into our lives, had he not taken her away, had the days not passed, had the last day of high school never come, had we never grown out of the people that we were then, had things always stayed the same. I don't care about memory. I just wish these things had happened so that I can always know that in the past something beautiful happened in our lives and that we felt peaceful and that she felt peaceful in my arms and that we would grow just a little bit older together and that the cycle of creation would continue. Losing your life early is a tragedy. The younger you die, the worse it is. To have never experienced fulfillment and motion and love. To have never experienced a dream where you will fall asleep and never wake up. And never want to leave, either. But we were never given any reassurance that a dream is any different from real and natural life. Dreams are always with us. But we are not sure we will ever be much different in our dreams than we are now. Or that we can feel something in our dreams that we cannot feel in life. There are so many things Serenity and I could have done together. So many places to go. Restaurants to try. Movies to see. Rivers, beaches, music to hear. And most of all, we would experience all of these together. But none of this will ever happen. We feel so many things at once. We feel the movement of our world. I feel you against my skin. I drive far away from where life is mundane. I feel the balance of the universe and all things moving in and out of themselves. I feel the regret and nostalgia seep in from under the floor. I remember listening to CDs and the music made me not want to stop moving, to always have a form of energy that would never let me forget the person I had become. I will never be satisfied with the person that I am at any given time. The world is still changing. The days are passing again. And I remember each day that will pass because I saw them in my past life. I memorized every moment that will happen in 10,000 universes, visions of eternity, nights spent inside with the door closed, writing, nights spent outside with all of my doors open sitting in front of a tree, writing. Without knowing the truth of the existence of you, you live the rest of your life in a lie. Without knowing how many days you can survive by yourself, without others to help you. The days are swallowed by night. The nights are swallowed by dawn. The dawn breaks through to the new day, suffering and then resting for several years. And then we stay where we are. We become motionless. We write the best poetry that we will ever write when our minds are overwhelmed by dopamine. We write the best poetry that we will ever write when we realize that our consciousness is an illusion and that our imagination can only take us so far before we stop imagining and start experiencing. Before we stop believing and start knowing, before we find what is holy and then find what is profane and then realize there is no difference between the two. We find ourselves unworthy, but then realize that the judge himself was unworthy, which makes us the worthy ones indeed. There was a sea without the sun. There were walls and towers surrounding our homes, and people came from across the sea and then took our homes from us, but we are still in our home writing about what we see. The visions of eternity simply an illusion of life, death and forgetfulness. We are gripped by despair when we realize that there will be no one to lead us through the darkness.
when we have taken too many pills, when we are lying on the bathroom floor from the overdose. The feeling we get when we are going through the tunnel, but we do not see the light at the end. The drugs make us feel what we will never feel again. The city lights of Toronto, the worst parts of town. The forest in West Virginia. The snow that covers the entire ground. The grass can no longer be seen. The cycle we repeat and the magic we have chained ourselves to. Visions of what we want to see will never be tolerated. But I am flying above everyone. I believe in my soul. I believe in the spirit that defies all understanding. I lie staring at the ceiling in my room after taking too many drugs, after dreaming too many times, after seeing too many visions and knowing that our minds are finite. But the poet draws the entire person out of the finite and into the infinite. And you contain the match that will light the spark of eternal life in all of its fullness. Serenity is the one I see walking through those hallways, her backpack on her shoulder, her body and her mind. She was in total control, but the silent wind, the leaves of autumn falling, would dictate the future. A little music, a horror of death when we are afraid of violence. Our imaginations bring us together. Your experiences become like mine. The days that passed for you passed for me as well. The answers you will never find, I will never find at all. Art is greater than science. Life is greater than routine. Understanding is better than calculation. Each day we would learn how to experience the world. Each day we remember the days when we loved. We see the graves of past generations. We see the years pass and we become buried in those graves. We wake from torture for one moment and the next moment we do not feel anything but the taste of our own death. We feel the morning of snow. I saw the snowflake on Serenity's cheek as she stood afar off. She began to walk back toward her home as the winter began to grow and the cold refused to subside. I could feel each moment. I could feel the seconds pass, as if there was a tangible feeling you would feel when time passed. But in reality, we never felt anything when time passed. It gave no indication that it was ever going by. The truth of love is its freedom. I believe in never letting go of the things I love, of always being free with my love. Everything you need from me is always yours. Everything you need from me can never be taken away from you. I walk by the concrete on the morning after the storm, and I see my face in the puddles. I write poems in a creative writing class, and no one understands my poems or my metaphors. To feel is the purpose of life. We crave new and greater experiences. We crave the moments when someone will realize how much we have accomplished, how worthy we are of true love, how worthy we are of feeling something, which we all know can only be felt once in our entire life. And when this feeling is gone, we know we will never feel it again, or anything like it. We know the life we will live together does not compare at all to the ones we will live apart. We know that the meaning that our own existence has is enveloped by a world with beauty and life. Serenity shows me more of what she had been experiencing. For the two million years she experienced between the time of our deaths, the flood was always coming to destroy everything we knew, a tidal wave over the entire nation. We would hear about it on the news for the next fifty years. All of our emotions are heightened. All of the sensations we feel, all of the words we speak that betray what we feel, the walls we tear down. We forget why they were there in the first place. The blinds are open once again this morning, after the storms have passed. I was falling into my own fear. I was walking into the class again, and I opened the notebook, sketching out words like the one Serenity wrote struck with new inspiration, struck with a new feeling every night. 
I swallow every sensation, whether bitter or sweet, and I love every part of them. I know that those who say we had no future were wrong, because we all have become one with eternity. We all have become a part of the time that is passing. We all have become one with the ticking clock. And we have all forgotten our hopes, our hatred, our violence. Whether earned or innocent of the crime, we have forgotten our joy. And now we are nothing. One with all things. One with nothing. That is what we are now. Nothing. The kiss I felt was not a lie. The nights that passed when I was alone were never full of truth. The days that passed when I was left on my own in a city I could never navigate made me forget about the hope I really had. Serenity took me by the hand and had one more thing to show me. She took me to a classroom where I saw my sleeping body, my head on a desk sleeping through the lecture, stricken by grief at her death. Look, she said, this is you. You are still alive. She told me that she had shown me all of these things while I was alive. so I could live the rest of my life like it was my last day. And then I burst into tears, knowing that I would have to say goodbye to her. Forever. I tried to hold on to her. But then I woke up in class. And then the period ended. I spent the rest of my college life in a routine and in a daze. And I knew that I would feel this bearing down on me, for as long as I would live my life, and I went back to my dorm room and stared at the ceiling. Everything I had just written was a dream, chemicals in our mind telling us what to feel. Days soon turn to night. Dawn swallows the night, and the cycle repeats. I can't let go of the hope in my soul. Even though I see the world in a different light, even though I know the cycle will repeat forever. The days soon turn to night. Dawn swallows the night. My notebook was blank. So I began sketching out the words again, and writing about what I felt, and all of the things I knew I might never feel again, all of the things I thought I knew about eternity, all of the things I was wrong about. The line, say goodbye after all we've tried without you here, is a quote from the now defunct band Good and Broken. Joseph Leo Hickey lives in Virginia. He is the author of eight other poetry books, including Baptism of Apathy, Unity, Love Poems at the End of Our Lives, Leafy, Purity Redeemed, The Penultimate Poems, Harmony, and The Revenant. He is currently 27 years old. His upcoming books are I Know Nothing But Miracles and Baptism of Apathy, Volumes 2 through 14. His YouTube channel is All the Stars Are Dead. He can be reached at his email address, joseph at melodiumhouse.com. Thank you for listening. The End.